Time for focus. The far right has been gaining ground in Europe and Italy is no exception. Seven decades after the death of Mussolini, the founder of fascism, there are still people in Italy who worship him. A bill that would ban the distribution of propaganda, images and symbols of fascist and Nazi ideologies is now before the Senate. Right, far-right supporters having recently made the headlines for littering a stadium with images of Anne Frank. Natalie Mendoza sent us this report. This is the image that shocked Italy. It's of Anne Frank, the young Jewish deportee who died in 1945, wearing an AS Roma football shirt. A photo montage created by the supporters of the SS Lazio as an insult. Towards the end of October, their Stadio Olimpico was defaced by dozens of these images pasted through the stands. Images that were circulated through social media, provoking an outcry in the country. And forcing the club's manager to apologise and to lay a wreath outside the synagogue in Rome. From now on, we will organise an annual trip to Auschwitz to educate 200 Lazio supporters. A few days later, another match and the Lazio supporters came out en masse. This Sunday, they were out to support their team, and here there were many who trivialised the matter. I come to the stadium all the time. I can tell you these images have been around for years. Sometimes with the Lazio shirt or the Roma or the Juventus, it's nothing new. It's a joke, friendly ribbing, nothing serious. It's not offensive, they haven't hurt anyone. What have they done? Just for a football shirt? It's a joke. They didn't kill anyone. The story has been blown out of proportion. But for other supporters, this business reflects the political ideologies present in Italian football. The far left and the far right are pretty much everywhere. Politics have always been in the stadium. Unfortunately, politics has always been around in football, especially amongst the ultras. The ultras are the most extreme supporters. They've been around for years and are well known for their racist and neo-fascist gestures. They are proud to use the fascist salute in honour of Mussolini. Adriano Dal Pozzo was an ultra for the whole of his adolescence. Today, he doesn't hide his enthusiasm for Mussolini. The National Fascist Party failed and disappeared, but there is still something good in fascism. Adriano is currently campaigning for Forza Nuova, or New Force, one of the political groups in the world of the neo-fascist extreme right in Italy. Today, their activists are marching as part of the celebrations of Armed Forces Day. At the head of the march is their founder, Roberto Fiore, sentenced in the 80s for belonging to an armed extreme right wing group. We believe we are the patriotic party of Italy right now and that it is a big enough demonstration to prove that it is true. Around 30 activists manage the security service during the march. Their objective? To monitor the journalists. And ensure that the activists follow the order of the day. No fascist salutes during the march. They know that the police are watching them and they would risk sanctions for advocating fascism. However, the party's representatives do not hide their admiration for Il Duce. Mussolini was an example one of the greatest statesmen of his time. Mussolini straightened out Italy and turned it into a world power. Emanuele Fiano is the man leading the battle against fascist nostalgia. His father was deported and a large part of his paternal family were exterminated at Auschwitz. Today he's an MP and is preparing a bill to make fascist propaganda a crime. There is already a law in Italy that punishes advocating fascism. It enforces the constitution and forbids any attempt to reorganize the fascist party. Now, his draft bill will also forbid the manufacture, distribution, circulation or sale of objects and symbols specific to the fascist party. 
with a penalty of six months to two years in prison. The economic and social crisis that we're facing creates the most fertile ground for extremist ideologies. Today we must make this law to prevent the terrible errors of the past from resurfacing. This battle is far from over. There are over 3,000 Italian language web pages commending fascism. Mussolini and gadgets still sell well in shops. And on the streets of Rome, the symbols of fascism are still visible. Silent reminders of the most somber page in European history. For more on this, I'm now joined in the studio by Marta Lorimer. She's a PhD candidate at LSC, and she focuses on the Italian and French far right. Hello, thanks Hello. for coming in. First of all, what does it mean to be a fascist in Italy today? Well, what does it mean to be a fascist in Italy at any time um, is probably a better question. But um, today, uh, Italian neo-fascism is part of Italian history since 1945, um, so since the beginnings of the Republic. Um, and basically, up until 1995, the main institutional expression of fascism was the Italian social movement, which was born out of the fascist party. Um, but then in 1994, 1995, they joined a coalition government with Berlusconi, and they reformed and became a conservative party. That basically uh, meant that, at that time, neo-fascists in Italy didn't really have a political representation that they had had for a very long time. Um, so the, there was a successor party to the Italian social movement on the neo-fascist side, but they were never quite successful. Um, today, neo-fascism is still a very minoritarian position in Italy, but we can find it expressed in two main groups. So on one side, there is Forza Nuova, which we've seen in this uh, focus video, um, which is more—it uh, responds more to the right-wing tradition of fascism. So they are a lot more um, on conservative traditional positions and strongly religious. While on the opposite side, um, there is the more f the fascism of the left, represented by Casa Pound, which uh, recalls a lot more the social traditions of fascism. Um, and they insist a lot more on social issues, such as housing for Italian only. And I understand that Casa Pound has been riding the anti-migrant wave um, and that in Ostia, a seaside resort near Rome, uh, the Casa Pound candidate recently got 9 percent. Uh, that was a big improvement on, on, a, on a previous election. But really, does it have — what are its chances in, in, in bigger-scale elections, parliamentary elections? Yeah, absolutely. So the vote in Ostia was, uh, for Casa Pound, a really important vote, uh, because they went from around 1 percent in the previous elections to 9 percent, which is a huge increase. And they're very much seeing this as a um, trial for uh, the national level. However, um, in Ostia, they really benefited of a very positive situation for them because uh, the previous political class had been involved in a mafia scandal, so uh, no one really trusted them. And uh, so they could really capitalize on this anti-establishment sentiment. On top of that, the party that would normally gain a lot from anti-establishment votes, uh, the Five Star Movement, um, has a mayor in Rome who has been heavily criticized for her handling of the city. So they also managed to get a number of voters who would have normally voted for the Five Star Movement, but who decided to vote for them because they did not like what the Five Star Movement was doing in government in Rome. OK, let's talk about the bill that was mentioned uh, in the report. Uh, I understand that it got past the lower house and is now before the Senate. Uh, and so this would be uh, uh, banning uh, propaganda, distribution of propaganda images and symbols of fascist and Nazi ideologies. What are its chances of passing and, and what would it change exactly? So Italy has uh, had for a very long time, actually, a law that prohibits the reformation of the fascist party. It's part of the Constitution. It was enacted through the Legge Scelba in the 50s. Um, and then there were a series of other directives to make sure that fascist propaganda was uh, criticized, was, well, uh, forbidden, especially, and especially the most violent manifestations of um, fascist positions. What this law does, compared to previous laws, it's, it is a lot stronger in terms of the sanctions it imposes and in terms of the um, the behaviors that it, uh, it, it attacks, let's say. Um, what, compared to 
previous uh, laws. This one really forbids, for example, just the sale of gadgets, which up until now was not illegal. Um, and you can end up in prison for doing the Roman salute. Um, so, in a way, it targets a lot more behaviors than the previous laws did. Um, you're correct to note that it did pass in the lower chamber. Its passage in the upper chamber is going to be a lot more complicated, because at the moment, uh, Italy has a very peculiar situation in which there are two different majorities in the lower house and in the upper house. So in the upper house, the government doesn't have a clear-cut majority, which means that if any of its senators decide not to suppo support the law, that this law might actually fail to be implemented. Now, as we saw in the report as well, so there are people who actually uh, still consider Mussolini a, a, a hero, who, who worship him. Um, what is it like in Italy, though, in general, in terms of confronting its past, its fascist past? Like in Germany, they're very open about in school textbooks and society generally, they will talk about the ugly past. In Italy, there is. Uh, in text in school, in textbooks in school, we do talk about fascism, um, and the heritage is it, it is quite clear that it did lead to war. Um, what happens though is that there has been at the same time a more mitigated view of it compared to the, the German approach to Nazism. Um, which is partially due to the fact that a lot of uh, fascists were involved in um, they, they had to somehow be reintegrated into the democratic life of the country. So while the Constitution was based on a strongly anti-fascist consensus, fascists did then play a role in Italian history, in the post-war history. Um, and overall, there are still a number of people that will tell you, uh, yeah, Mussolini did some very bad things, the racial laws were wrong, but everything he did before that made Italy great. All right. Thank you very much indeed for your time yeah, and your you. analysis, Marta Lorimer. Thank you for watching. I'll be back in a few minutes. Stay tuned to France 24.